Can I get a hand, a show of hands? How many people here are familiar with NX Open or have ever created journals? I see about five hands. Okay. Great. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about GRIP, but uh, GRIP is not necessarily the same thing as NX Open. It is uh, a toolkit that I'll mention, but it's not, it's not the same. So you're already familiar with who we are. Um, brief overview of what I'm going to talk about is several of the uh, programming tools that are available in NX currently. Um, getting to the NX Open Framework, I'll go through a scope, a uh, summary of the scope, and then I'll talk a little about what NX Open is and what it isn't, and also uh, look at the benefits of using NX Open within your company um, as an individual user, user or uh, company-wide. And then I'm going to show some demos, um, mention some resources, and then we'll have a really short Q&A. So, um, how many of you, uh, did anybody really like look into some of these programming tools that are available in NX outside of NX Open or journaling? Okay. Yeah, a couple people. Um, so NX Open is available and we're primarily going to talk about that tonight. Snap is another, um, API that is available through NX. Um, and that's, you can create GUIs for that. It sounds like somebody here tonight is familiar with, uh, Grip, or, sorry, Grip's below, Snap is, uh, what I'm talking about right now. But you can also create GUIs with that. Um, it, it can also be run and edited in the journal editor. Knowledge Fusion is a knowledge-based API that's, uh, available in NX. It's, um, a little bit. API. API? API. Oh, sorry, application programming interface. So it's um, it's a way for programmers to interface with NX. And then GRIP, of course, um, it's also good. You can create GUIs with that. It's been around for a while. A lot of companies take advantage of that. ManuScript, um, ManuScript can be used with, I think, the majority of these other tools up here. ManuScript allows you to use ASCII files to create um, ribbons, custom ribbons buttons, uh, drop-down menus, specific to the applications to your tool, your company, um, and just create tools for you that you like you like to use as or that you like to use as a user. And then we'll talk about block UI styler and that's a that's a GUI tool within and GUI is a graphical user interface. GUI is a tool within NX that allows you to interactively create um, dialogues to go on top of your custom routines. Um, that have the same look and feel of an X. And I'll do a short demo of that tonight as well. So here we have the framework of NX Open. Um, oh, you can't see my mouse. Uh, so at the bottom, there's all the base NX functionality. And then built on top of that is um, all the user functions that allows the interactions with NX as a user. On top of that, there's NX, nxopen.net, which is available in five different languages currently, uh, Java, C Sharp, uh, Visual Basic, Python, um, I think I'm forgetting one. We'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, and then on top of that, uh, Snap is another app API that um, allows users to create user interfaces. Um, the, so the scope of NX Open can be used Tools can be created um, as early as quoting um, through the CAD CAM and the post-processing. Um, and with whatever application you have the license for, you have access to that piece of the API. So if you don't have the CAM license, you, you can still write that code, but you can't run it, if that makes any sense. Um, then up to the post-processing. <laughs> And something else that's really great about NX Open or any of these toolkits is that they are scalable, meaning individual users can take advantage of them. Um, you write the code once, you write the tool once, and then up to 100 or you know however many users can take advantage of that. Um, it's also 
smaller companies and larger companies can take advantage of it. I'll talk a little bit about what you do this briefly. So the base is, you know, automate, customize, integrate, you know, automate repetitive tasks in the next. You can take advantage and leverage um, data from CMM um, and uh, anything else. Da um, you can apply boundary conditions, so limitations on um, material availability, uh, custom requirements, design rules can all be integrated and enforced through NX Open and help you create and streamline your processes. And then the customized piece, um, NX Open allows you to customize the environment to suit your company's needs and your product needs through the menus, buttons, and uh, the toolbars available to you that you can create. And then with the integration piece, NX Open, particularly the .NET, allows you to integrate with Excel and any of the other, or many of the other um, desktop applications. You can integrate with Team Center, Oracle, if anybody uses Oracle here. Uh, server databases, SQL databases. Um, you know, it really makes it, uh, it really expands the functionality and the robustness of NX. So some of the benefits here, you know, so if you have template files, you have start parts, NX can come in on top of that and take it even further and you can get more um, reuse out of your files and your data. It also limits the need to re-enter data in multiple places because you can automate filling in fields. Another piece is, um, of course, automate your repetitive tasks over and over and over. That's an algorithm that can be automated. Um, let's see, oh, reduces errors. Um, the less that users are having to manually enter in data, the less you're going to see user errors. That just, that's just the fact of, um, you know, having a lot of users. Um, so this also it reduces the training time for new hires because a lot of your information is built into your files. That's less that needs to be um, that somebody needs to be trained on. So it can also get users, new users, up to speed faster on you know products and processes. So faster design, faster design times, lower lead times, faster CAM programming. Do we have any CAM program uh, CAM people here tonight? Six, seven people. Um, so faster CAM programming can use, be used to automate some of your um, your shop docs. Can be used to automate and speed up um, your programming time through templates, through um, object creation, and uh, so increases productivity. And uh, the bottom line is it, it improves speed and accuracy in your processes. Okay. So a question we get a lot in that people ask is, what's the difference between a macro and a journal? Aren't they the same thing? Um, so a journal, so real quick, so a macro, more people are familiar with what a macro is, and a macro records keystrokes. And that's different than what a journal does, where a journal records um, like the actions taken. It'll, it records the, the objects created in the interactive session. Um, another thing about macros is that it is dialogue specific, whereas journals are not. A, a macro, if, if NX um, releases a maintenance pack or an update, and that affects a dialogue that any a macro was using, that macro is likely to no longer work because the dialogue has changed. Um, so it reports button clicks. If something in the interface changes, it's no longer going to work. So in that way, journals are much more robust and reliable and more likely to work with future updates. Uh, let's see. So the difference between a journal and an application program. A journal is a script that can be recorded and rerun, whereas an application is something that is compiled and um, probably using something like uh, Visual Studio. Um, so it's generally going to be a longer, a much longer process, a more complex tool as opposed to the journal. And the journal um, is a really great tool because as you're creating your application, a lot of the op processes, and I'll show you um, how to know in NX what is journalable and what isn't, a lot of the things as you're creating your application can be journaled, and then you can do a couple of edits and then copy and paste it into your application, and so it really helps um, build your tools faster. Um, what was that note at the bottom? Oh yeah, journal playback is currently only available in .NET languages VB and C Sharp, as well as Python. 
um, C, C++, C, C++ and Java must be compiled currently. So you don't get the replay feature in uh, journal, journaling with that currently. All right, so let's actually do some demos now. So here we have, this is gonna be a motor assembly in a couple of seconds. Um, so if so, if you work with, say, you know, uh, part families and you create similar assemblies repeatedly, um, that can get really repetitive, but you can actually build a lot of that into an NX open routine and it'll really streamline your process for you. So right now I'm just running a journal that I created and it's going to bring in so our crane shop and it just built our model for us. What it also did was, so it assembled all of these components. We can even do it again. So it's gonna bring in all the components, create the components, and then apply um, assembly constraints. So all these objects were just created. So, and it looks like it did it correctly. I've done this about 30 times, so I knew it was gonna do it right. But just to show you that um, you know, it was able to do it correctly. So yeah, so if you're creating assemblies repeatedly, this is also, could also be used for um, maybe CAM if you have match or assemblies that you use a similar process repeatedly. Um, just as easily, this could be used to uh, replace a component. So if you have a part family that's part of a larger assembly, um, you need to switch out a different size. This can be used to do that um, just as quickly and easily. And it can also be used to pull your part files from um, a PLM like Agile Oracle or um, Team Center or whatever system you use. Mm -hmm. So another thing that um, that users use a lot for a variety of reasons is gonna be, um, let's see, I wanna be in this part. So another thing users use a lot is um, attributes. And they do this for a variety of reasons. Um, so, if you're going to create several attributes for a custom purpose, you know, a um, couple of reasons I could think of would be um, for your shop docs. We use the shop docs tool in CAM, and you want to put in your own fields that maybe don't already exist through the current shop doc feature. This is a place where you can enter in those values. And I've done this right here. I created um, all of these right here. And I'm going to show you a quick tool for editing those. So rather than go like, you know, right click properties, and you could go I think file properties as well. But you have to get in here and then you know come down here, edit, and do all this. You could create a tool that just updates those specific attributes. So let's say um, test click. Customer name, customer A, drawing, six, five, uh, part number. So then it tells you what you did, what it just set those attributes to. Um, or this, I put that in there, or that was in there, um, and edited this, but this is get a little bit of feedback to a user and tells them you know, what it was sent to you so they can verify this at the end if you want it. Um, but that's just a quicker way of updating and interacting with your part files that NX uh, Open allows for. Real quick, do we have any questions on what we've seen so far? We Doesn't sound like it. So he asked to see the code for a journal file. 
So this is so this is one that I recorded. So this sets the translucency of an object to 50%. And this is mostly just um, generated by NX. This is what you get. Is that what you were hoping for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're making this bigger, and is it similar to Python? I have not used Python before, so I don't think I can answer that question. This is C sharp. C sharp. Where is my? There we go. So this is just some of the API. Um, for those of you who are interested. These are some of the API classes and functions. This is pretty standard. This is going to be at the top of every one of your journals. And this gets down into the display modification object that gets created when you change anything in the display. So another one that um, comes up a lot is folks ask for a way to edit the drawing title block. And Annex does provide a class and some functions for accessing the title block to the API. So this is going to bring in a custom uh, title block. I'm going to call it so part name, uh, part A, me, my initials. And then it just brought that in there and filled in those fields. And that's really, that's Fairly simple block, uh, or title block. That's not what I wanted. But we'll just do it again. But it's good to know that it's there. Um, if you have, if you're in design and you're doing a lot of drawings, this might be useful for you. I know some companies, um, an order for a customer could require 50 drawings. Is there a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is. So the question was, um, where or is there any documentation for um, the API, the language? So there's a couple places to go for that. One of them is to go through, you know, menu help, NX help, and then you click on the programming tools down here, and that's going to take you to the programming tools site, and so. These are the toolkits currently. So if you wanted to look at NX Open, say, you'd go into here. It's a little bit slow. Okay. Um, so you can click around in here. This is not super easy to navigate. There is also the online.net reference, and there is also um, there is the Siemens Automation Forum. And then if you're looking for samples, there is, there's a lot that are provided with the NX uh, base installation. So let's see. So I'll just show you where that is. So you go to your base install. So now my, I'm in my base install. And you're kind of come down here to UG open. And in here, there's, these are all C++ files. Mm -hmm. um, sample NX open applications where you're going to find a lot of really good, useful um, examples to browse through. So in here, there's parts, sample parts. Um, there's a journal file and any other related files in here. And then there's usually a readme file that'll kind of talk you through what the tool itself does. So this is all, this is all just comes in with your install and there's, you know, there's samples for several different languages, Python here, if you wanted to look, in, look into Python. So this 
So that's available to you. Um, and then in a webinar we did a few months back, I went through here. Um, I created a journal that created or that just set a uh, part to 50% um, translucency. Well, we can take that a little step farther and actually put a, um, a dialogue around it. So the way you can do that with the block styler, and so now I'm in the block styler tool right now. And in the block styler, you get the block catalog. And these are all the different blocks that you can use to create your custom dialogue. So you've got basic. Um, this just gives you a basic dialogue and a string field. Um, a list box. And these are all, and what we, what we mean by um, the familiar NX look and feel is they look just like NX dialogues. So, so if I, so I want to create a dialogue that looks like this. I want just an object selection dialogue because I want to be able to specify an object or a component body or solid body that I want to set 50% translucency or 30% whatever I prefer. And that's something I like to use because when I work in CAM, I like to be able to set my stock um, to translucent off and on really quickly. And I don't want to have to go through. So I'm going to exit out of here. I'm not going to save it because I've already done this. Um, but so you normally, when you want to set something, change it. You go right click, edit display, you know, click, 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 or drag it. And when you're doing this frequently, uh, it, it gets a little tired. So... I just want to go like this. It's a little faster. And then when I'm done, I can just change it back. So, I mean, depending on how you use an X and what your preferred methods are, um, it's nice to be able to create small tools like this to just make your work dig go a little smoother. You just made your own custom tab. Yes. Yeah, and this can be done. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, so there's always, you know, this option and to customize it. But this only customizes um, on your your uh, user interface if you're going to create something that is maybe company wide. Um, you would probably then use menu script because then that can see. Would that be a role? Would you save it as a role in the next word to somebody? Have that same tab. Uh, that is a good question. So menu script, I I don't know. Okay. That's a good question though, but. Menu script is um, use ASCII files to create, you know, your own custom ribbons and everything. And you could put that so if everybody in the company is pointed to a network location for specific things for your environment where variables are pointed there. Um, depending on the setup, you could just put those menu script files in there, and it would show up on everybody's user interface when they just open up that egg the next time. So that's one way of doing it. So there's a couple options, but um, so this is this only takes this is only seen on my machine right here. Oh, and another one that's uh, kind of fun and nice to have is just open up a web browser, a file browser to the file location, um, and then I can just keep working. Oops, keep working in NX. But every once in a while, it's just nice to have that to be able to pop up. But that's also something that you can do with NX open. Um, oh, so these are all the block stylers, blocks. And oh, in this dialog over here, I didn't show you when we were in the block, uh, the UI styler. But when you, if you're going to use any of these blocks, this dialog that pops up has a lot of different parameters and settings. So you can actually um, really customize how these blocks work. So you can specify single single object selection, multiple selections if it's something like an object selection. Um, and there's a bunch of other settings in there. Uh, data type. So it's, it's highly, highly customizable. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna walk through this whole demo. I'm just going to point at where 
So if you want to try out creating your own journals, this is where you're gonna do that on this developer tab right here. And you get there by going right click, developer. If it's, if it's not turned on, I think, I think it's usually default turned off, but you can turn it on. And then to record, you just hit record and go through this. And if you want to set the language that you're recording in, you can do that through menu preferences, user interface, journal right here, and then you can select your selection right there. There's a couple options for editing your code. Um, the journal editor within NX is a great place to start. Um, NX or Notepad++ is a little more advanced. Um, it's a little more friendly user interface and then Visual Studio if you're gonna create a larger, more complicated um, program that you want to then compile. All right, um, so we went over where the help docs were. We went over UG Open, um, the NX programming and customization form. Uh, NX Journaling is another website that's really great for um, a source of you know NX Open help and advice. Um, and then, of course, we can always be a resource for you. Um, any questions? So is this, is this going to be coaching grips? Is it just kind of old school programming is kind of people going to do that? You know, I don't really want to say because I've heard for a long time that the grip is, they're phasing it out. But at the same time, I've also heard that's not at all true. So... I really don't know. Um, I, I think Siemens could speak to that better than I could. <laughs> oh. When you say that NX Open is the one tool that you promote instead of Grip, like they like have Grip, but it's like, yeah, use NX Open. Would you say that that's more? I would say it seems to be that there's more development in NX Open as time goes on, but I, that's all I'd say.